right, let's make some sticky date pudding. Now, I don't know about you, but this is quite a very common comfort food, especially in Australia. I was first introduced to this in Australia, and my goodness, what an amazing, amazing dish. It is traditionally extremely sweet. So my question and what my challenge was, is how can we make this as healthy as possible while still preserving that same sweet goodness that we want to bite into with a sticky date pudding? Now there's a couple things that we've done here. One is again, same theme, is we've improved the quality of the ingredients that we're using. We have reduced the sugar and used more whole food based sugars instead of processed sugars. And I've snuck in a bunch more healthy protein and some other superfood with other dense nutrition in it that doesn't necessarily affect the flavor. If anything, it improves the flavor in my opinion. What I mean by that is your, your maca, your lacuma powder, that kind of thing, we're gonna be sneaking that into the sauce so that we can get that extra benefit of nutrition and it provides a little bit of a caramelly flavor into the sauce as well. So we're gonna use all that to our benefit. We will be needing a food processor. And this is because the sneaky little bit of extra fiber that I'm gonna be adding in is from whole sweet potato. This is raw, this is not cooked, it's super easy. We need about 250 grams of sweet potato. Skin on is perfectly fine. And we're gonna let the machine do the rest of the work. So let's dump that in there while we can, about 250 grams or about a one and a third cup. And then when it comes to our dates, we wanna give these a couple of minutes if we can in some boiling water. So with the dates, especially if you're using the medjool dates, they're nice and soft and, and caramelly. And these are probably the ideal form of them. But what, one thing is, um, if you're using the dried dates, they tend to be a little bit less expensive and they definitely work in this dish, but you will need to let them soak just that little bit longer so that they can soften up and blend into this dish. But I guess if you've got a, an extremely powerful food processor, that probably shouldn't be an issue and you can power right on through. So let's get rid of all the seeds in these guys. The last thing you want is to accidentally end up with a seed in the food processor. I've done that and it's just, very crunchy and hard and ruins the dish. So let's make sure we get all those out. And even if you buy pre-pitted dates, you might still wanna have a little check inside because oftentimes the machine that they're pitted with can miss, can miss. All right, so once we've got all those seeds out of there, just gonna put the kettle on, gonna boil up a little bit of water and let that nice hot water soak with the dates. The benefit of using these whole food sugars or these whole food sweet foods is that nature designed them with all this other fiber and all these other nutrients and, and you know, I, I hesitate to even just say vitamins and minerals because there's so much more that science has now labeled phytonutrients as in plant-based nutrients that they don't even necessarily understand the tip of the iceberg on. So when we use whole foods, we get the benefit of that and our body gets the benefit of that but as if we're using processed sugars, then that's all been stripped out. So we definitely want to make full advantage, take full advantage of whole food sweeteners wherever possible. Okay, so let's use exactly one cup of boiling water for those medjool dates, because we're also going to be using that water straight into the food processor. Now, because I have been using the soft medjool dates already, I don't need to let these soak very long at all. But while I'm gonna give them a couple of minutes there, we can be adding all the other liquid ingredients into this food processor now, so that when we mix them down, it's gonna create a nice even blend without having to go in there with a scraper and scrape it down. Okay, so you can choose between coconut syrup or maple syrup. I find there's almost a little bit more of a molassesy flavor from coconut syrup, and you get a little bit more of a vanilla -y flavor from real maple syrup. So that's up to you, but we'll put that one into that. You don't want to waste a single drop of that, so good. Okay. Then with your apple cider vinegar, we're going to need about a tablespoon. Now, don't be worried about this. You're not going to taste vinegar, but this is actually going to do a little chemical reaction, nice little backyard or, or first grade science chemical reaction in our dish to create the rise that we want. So rather than using yeast or anything like that, we're going to use a tablespoon of vinegar here. And in the dry ingredients, we're going to use baking soda. When they come together, we get bubbles. So that's what we want in this dish. We can also add the vanilla into this stage as well. You could eyeball it or you could go about a teaspoon into here. And let's add the macadamia oil or 
any other neutral flavor tasting oil that you've got. So we've got some coconut oil here. Let's add that all in straight away. And because, like I said, these were nice soft medjool dates, I'm going to put that all in now too. Be very careful with the hot water to not spill that on you. And let's get that blending down. Okay. Now, a little bit of chunky texture here is perfectly okay. Because we're going to end up baking this into a cake, you probably won't even be able to tell or be able to taste it. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. If you find, though, that that's your preference, then you may need to either use a stronger food processor or a blender instead. So that's entirely up to you. But that's looking excellent. So that little bit of texture from the sweet potato, again, perfectly fine. It's going to blend in uh, to the dish. By the time it cooks down, we shouldn't even notice, notice a thing. So we'll scrape down the edges of this, and then we just need to add in our dry ingredients. And we're pretty much done. All right, let's get some cinnamon into that. About a teaspoon. If you really love the cinnamon flavor, you could go an extra teaspoon, because cinnamon is one of those nice, mild spices that we can be using. Psyllium husk, this is one of the magic fibers. I actually call it a magic broom because it tends to do a nice little, well, actually a really good job of sweeping out the intestines and keeping you regular, to be perfectly honest. So we want to get our two teaspoons of psyllium husk into here. And it also acts as a nice binding agent for the, um, for the sticky date for, um, instead of using eggs. So again, this recipe is egg free, not necessarily because I'm saying eggs are bad, but if you need to send it to schools, for example, then we can have an egg-free version in this as well, or if you just want the full vegan variety. We've got our flax meal straight in, and our flour, choosing a coconut flour, which is a little bit more of a whole food, and our actual coconut, so desiccated coconut. Okay, and then last but not least, We've got our baking soda and our baking powder. So a teaspoon of each. Let's get them in there. Now before we fully incorporate the wet into the dry, let's just make sure that we've got your oven preheated and your baking tray all ready to go. Now this is approximately a good size for this dish. You could go maybe a touch larger, but I wouldn't go much larger than that, otherwise we're going to end up with a fairly flat sticky date pudding. So this is a great size. If you want, in this case, you could line it with a bit of baking paper or a nice little smearing of some coconut oil. So we've got even a little bit left over here. Let's just add a little bit of that in there. Preparing the pan. And being that it's a sticky date pudding, and we're going to take it out and have it be nice and soft as a sort of a cake texture and then pour a nice sticky sauce over top. It doesn't necessarily matter if it doesn't come out of that pan perfectly well. Okay, so once that's all ready to go and we've got the oven preheated, then we're ready to do our last combination. As soon as we combine these, we want to put it straight into the container here because we're going to start getting that bubbly reaction from the vinegar and the baking soda. So let's make sure we do this in one fell swoop. And then your last little bit, you can mix by the, with the spatula. So just to incorporate those last little bits in, scraping down the edges. And if you need to, you can even remove the blade. There we go. Just to finish the mixing. This will save you dirtying some other bowls and making more dishes in the, in the kitchen as well. Let's get all those little nice bits off there. Give it a little mix. And it is going to be quite thick. Now, um, some of you that are used to making a cake or a traditional cake batter, especially if you're not making it gluten-free, you'll notice that a cake batter is quite runny, whereas this is looking quite thick, and you might be tempted here to add more liquid. Please don't, okay? We've got a lot of the fiber in this that's absorbing that liquid, and by the time we bake it, it's going to still be nice and moist. So this is the texture that we're looking for, and especially because it is gluten-free, 
we need to have that little bit of extra structure coming from the fibers as well to make us a nice, soft, sticky date when this comes out of the oven. Okay, so let's transfer everything into the baking dish. We'll give it a nice even out with the spatula, pressing it down, giving us an even surface. We actually want to be a little bit picky about this even surface because once we're done here, we're going to pour a little bit of coconut cream over the surface. And that's just going to help to keep the surface moist while the inside cooks. So let's get ourselves, this might be easier if you do this with a spoon. So we'll give it a nice little flatten, make sure we're not too mounded up in the middle. There we go. And then before we pop it into the oven, we'll drizzle a little bit of coconut cream on top, maybe about a tablespoon or two. There we go. And if you have a nice thick coconut cream like this one is, we'll just give that a little spread out as well. And there we go. So we'll pop it into the oven. And our first sign that it's done is we're going to be smelling it like delicious sticky date pudding that we just want to dig into. Try and hold off until it's fully cooked. Let's now make the sticky sauce for our sticky date pudding. So once it's come out of the oven, as far as just before serving, I'd like to be able to let this cool a little bit. It's going to help make the cakes hold together a little bit better, basically. So if we can let that cool just a little bit, not to the point where it's fully cold, as in coming out of the fridge, but just give it a chance to kind of settle when it comes out of the oven. And then it gives us time to pull together our sauce and serve that nice and warm. So on the saucepan, we're going to just turn that on. Let's just start on medium, medium to low heat and then it's super easy. So now we're just going to use uh, coconut cream, about seven tablespoons of that. And I'd prefer you to go for a full fat coconut cream. Ideally, if you can get a hold of an organic one, that would be even better. But about seven tablespoons of that. Let's make sure I don't lose track. <laughs> Five, six, and seven. Okay. And again, if you're a definite sweet tooth, you could probably uh, maybe go one and a half times this recipe, but I probably wouldn't go the full, uh, full doubling of it because that's going to just be a lot. Now, when it comes to sweeteners, this is where we want to go as much as possible to the whole food side as we can, away from the processed. But that being said, to create a sticky sauce that's, I guess, with the same effect and same look, we're going to have to make a little bit of a compromise here. Now I've chosen a blend between real maple syrup, which does come with a fair amount of other nutrients that haven't been stripped out, and I've chosen uh, rice malt syrup. Now this is organic rice malt syrup, and it, is, it does have a fair amount of processing to it because this comes from rice, however this is 100% glucose and there's no fructose in it. So in that sense it is considered a healthier version of sweetener. So we're going to do three tablespoons of organic rice malt syrup. And your measurements might not be perfectly exact because there's going to be quite a bit that's going to stick to your spoon, but that's okay. So we're going to go approximately three tablespoons of that one. And then your real maple syrup. And just in case you didn't know that there is a pretty massive difference between a bottle of maple syrup that's labeled maple flavored syrup versus a real Canadian maple syrup. Um, you can also get them in America now as well, so we're looking for the real variety of maple as opposed to a flavoured syrup that has a whole bunch of other numbers and things in it. So we want the quality version. So three tablespoons of real maple syrup. There's our two and our three. Okay. And to give this that nice caramelly flavor that we're looking for on a sticky date sauce, I'm going to go to the world of superfoods and incorporate some maca powder and some lacuma powder. Now, if you're not familiar with these, they are fairly common superfoods that you can find in most, most health food stores. And maca is particularly good for 
our hormone system, particularly balancing for the circulatory system and our hormones. Um, and lacuma actually comes from a fruit. And so it's got a little bit of natural sweetness, but it's also quite caramelly, which lends very well to this sauce. So that's one tablespoon each, ma maca and lacuma. And then we wanna do another full teaspoon of vanilla into this one as well. There we go. And then we're just gonna stir that until it's evenly combined. And if it's starting to really boil, we wanna turn it down just a little bit. We want it to gently heat up. So nice and gentle till it's combined. And you can just use a spatula here just to press out any of the, um, the lumps from the powders that we put in, but that's fairly easy to do as this warms through. And then it will thicken as it heats. So this is up to you how far you wanna take this. If you wanna let it simmer and really thicken, you could almost get almost like a candy, so we don't wanna go too far. Basically, as soon as it's combined, it's ready to pour onto our cake. So as that heats nice and gently, I'll work out some of those last little lumpy bits in a second here. And let's get that cake cut so we can serve this up and have our sticky date pudding without any guilt. Well, maybe less guilt. There's still sugar in this, let's be honest. But it's a much healthier option. Okay, so we'll let that continue heating. See how it's just a very gentle bubble. I've turned the heat now right down to low because we reached a heat within the sauce. Okay, so coming over to our sticky date cake. Again, this has been sitting for a little while. I'm gonna do a little creative shape here. I like a good triangle shape. And hopefully the first one, <clears throat> we can get to come out nice and easily. Is it gonna go? There we go. <clears throat> so it, as is the case with when you, cut, when you cut most cakes, the first piece might be your sacrificial anode because we gotta get into there to be able to lift it out. So if that's the case, make that one served for your portion and we can serve everyone else the, the beautiful ones. And then now that this is all incorporated, got those nice bubbles, it's starting to thicken. That is, Pretty near perfect. Okay. So let's do a little drizzle of our nice sticky date sauce on there. You could even turn up the health notch a little bit by adding some nice toasted pecans or walnuts on the top of there, maybe even some fresh berries. But as you have it, there we have our healthified sticky date pudding.